And showing your success helps you, I believe, as long as you're not doing it in a tacky way, it helps people to see where you've come from and where you're going. Hey babes, it's Kayla Craft with the Mommy Millionaire Podcast. I'm a mom of three littles, ER nurse turned self-made millionaire and lifestyle entrepreneur. I am bringing you inspiring stories, business and mindset tips to help you be shameless in pursuing your ambitions. Hey, Mommy Millionaires. I am so excited about today's special guest. I first met her when we were hanging out in Monaco just, it seems like yesterday, but it was actually a couple months ago now. And I loved her instantly because she is so real, but she is so amazing when it comes to being a businesswoman and being a mom. I have Autumn Calabrese on the show today, and she is a celebrity fitness trainer. She's a nutrition expert. And she actually graduated from IIN, which I know there's a lot of you alumni listening in right now. So she's a huge inspiration. She's created the 21 day fix, the 21 day fix, extreme 80 day obsession. All of you Shakeology lovers right now are like, freaking out because this is your girl. This is the team AC girl. She is also the author of the Fixate cookbooks and the Fixate healthy cooking show that's on Beachbody On Demand. You guys, I could go on and on about what she's accomplished in her life. But I think the thing that's most exciting that a lot of you guys will be able to tune into actually at the same time you'll be listening to this podcast is she is the celebrity trainer on Khloe Kardashian's Revenge Body on E's new hit series. So how cool is that? So Autumn, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm excited to be on. Thanks for having me. It's good to see you. I know. Uh, So you know what? You have this long line of accomplishments. And I think people listening in right now, it's almost intimidating because it's like, okay, where Autumn is now is so far from where they're currently at. That's what they think in their mind, right? And so I think it's so important for people to connect with you as a person, Autumn, right away for them to understand your story. Because I know personally, because we're friends, it hasn't always been like that for you. Like it hasn't been always the glory story. So let's take it back to what it was like before you became the celebrity fitness expert and, you know, multimillionaire living in Calabasas, like beautiful. Um, Tell us, what was it like before that? Yeah, I think it's so important to share this part of the journey because so many people do see that. They have these people that they look up to and they see where we're at right now and they hear the accolades of where you're at now. And it can feel like they're so far away from, from that. But what I can tell you guys is you're only ever one step, one phone call, one being in the right place at the right time away from all of your dreams coming true. And the key is to never getting up, giving up. Because for me, it's like Kayla said, it wasn't always like this for me. It's been seven years. It's been seven years since I signed that contract with Beachbody. Well, I'm 38 years old. Okay. So that means it was 31. It was almost 32 years of not being this person, of living a very different story. And that story was great in its own right, but it was a very different story. It wasn't the mommy millionaire living in Calabasas. I mean, I was a personal trainer. I was going through a divorce, went through a divorce. And even though my divorce wasn't a really hard one, a bad one, um, it was actually super easy and we're still very good friends. But it was a divorce nonetheless. It was a change in my life. It was a change in Dominic's life. I was a personal trainer, which means there's still only so much money you can earn in one day unless you're going to open up a gym or put other trainers under you or some way like that. When you're an individual and it's based on the hour, there's only so many hours in a day you can work. And, you know, sometimes you have to sleep and sometimes you got to have a little fun. And I'm a mom, so I had to be there to take care of my son. So we lived in a one bedroom apartment and I lived paycheck to paycheck. And that doesn't mean that I was, I was broke. I wasn't broke. I wasn't poor. I was able to live in a nice one bedroom. I had a nice car. I paid for Dominic's preschool, but that was still a very different lifestyle than the one I'm blessed to be able to live now where I don't have to stress about the money 
the way I had to stress about it then. So yeah, it was, it was a lot of trials and tribulations and quote unquote failures and, you know, knocking on a door and that not being the right door. It was all of that before I ended up in the right room at the right time, having something to offer that they needed. There were so many other times where I thought I had something to offer and it just wasn't what that brand was looking for at the time. Mm. So um, yeah, it's been a long journey. When you were a kid, you know, d- did you see yourself living this big life that you have today? Yes. That is the one thing that I can say. And, and I used to be shy about saying that. I used to be sort of like, well, is that boasting or is that being braggy? And what I realized is it's not. I knew from the time I was very young. Uh, if you ask my dad and my family, I always said I was moving to Los Angeles. I mean, I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, Mm -hmm. but I was the little girl saying like, I'm going to live the dream in LA. Love the movie, Pretty Woman. Love the opening scene when he's like, welcome to Hollywood. What's your dream? Everybody that comes to Hollywood has a dream. Um, I said like eight, nine, 10 years old, that was resonating with me. I knew I wanted to get here and that I had a dream. I was a dancer growing up. I loved the movie Dirty Dancing. And like, I wanted to do that. I wanted to be on that stage. And I knew I wanted to inspire people. And how I do it now is a little bit different version than maybe what I thought it would be as a kid. I thought I would be acting and dancing, but it's, I honestly think for me, it's more rewarding doing it this way than not that there's anything not rewarding the other way. It's just, I love getting to help people. I love getting to help them recognize how good health and wellness feels, how good nutrition can feel that they don't have to feel stuff. They don't have to have a negative relationship with food that exercise can be fun. So, um, so yes, I did always see myself living this big life. And it's funny because when I wasn't living this big life, there was a really deep frustration. Like there was a part of me that was like, I'll get spiritual, I guess, on you for a minute, but there was like this side of me that knew, that knew that there was like this other part of me that wasn't like, it wasn't there yet. It wasn't out, but it was supposed to be out. And I was like, when is that coming? Mm -hmm. If I know that's the life I'm supposed to lead and where is it? When is it going to happen? Because I'm tired of waiting for it. Mm -hmm. But you know, it took 32 years. I think a lot of people are in that spot right now. You know, that frustration, like they know that there's another side of them and they just haven't figured out how to become that person yet. And so it's so inspiring to hear your story because it's like, all it sounds like you did was you kept the faith. You just persisted until. And that's what a successful person does. They don't take no for an answer. They just keep going, try different angles. Okay, keep going until, and then there's gonna be another until. You just keep going. And I hope all of you mommy millionaires listening in right now can really just bottle up her grit and take it home with you and remember to just like persist until. I love that. I love that. And when people ask me that same question, Autumn, like, did you know? And I was like, absolutely. 100%. So I think that that's amazing that you knew that. And I think you should absolutely be like proud of that fact because it shows at a very young age that you knew the power of visualization. Like, yeah, exactly. And even though I didn't recognize that that's what it was, that It was like, no matter how many times I got knocked down and there was so many of them, I don't want to act like there wasn't. There was plenty of times crying on the couch, crying to my friends, crying to my sister about like, why didn't this opportunity work? Why is it so hard? When is it going to happen? But, and even, even in the moments of feeling like maybe I should just quit, it would be like, as fast as that thought would come into my head it would almost be like comical that the thought would come into my head. Cause I would be like, hey, yeah, right. Like that's a stupid thought. So I guess you might as well dry your eyes and keep going. Like as soon as that thought of like, why don't you quit would come into my mind, I would be snapped out of it. Like instantly of like, because you don't quit. Duh. Like, let's go pick yourself up and keep going. Were your parents like that? Like there had to have been something modeled for you to make you not be a quitter. Like, how did you get that? I don't, honestly, no, I don't want to say that my parents are like that. Um, my relationship with my mom has always been very strained and my mom, my mom did not raise us. My dad did, but my mom raised my little brother and sister. She was a stay at home mom. Um, so it did not come from there. I think in a way it came from my dad because my dad was an entrepreneur 
And my dad always busted his butt to make sure we had whatever we needed. Um, his, his path took a different journey and, and his entrepreneurial side ended with our third restaurant when there was a bunch of issues with the landlord and things like that. And I think actually what that taught me was seeing, seeing how I was, I was 14, 15 at the time. So I was very aware of what was happening with Mm -hmm. the business and getting to watch my dad go through it. And I actually watched it take his faith in himself Hmm. and never get it back. Like as many times as he wanted to try again, that last thing took his, his belief in himself. And so I think that actually pushed me that much farther of like making sure I have many irons in the fire and making sure I'm always on top of, of my finances and that I'm, I'm, I'm always one step ahead of the, in the planning game of like what's coming next for me. But also to be aware that a failure is a failure is not a failure. It's a redirect. And I don't think my dad saw it as that. And it it ended up sitting on him like a failure. So that gave me different perspective to not look at things the same way he did. So what does your dad do now? Did he just get a job or? He did. He had a job for years. Uh, He actually was a um, school bus driver for many years. He's retired now and he actually lives out here in California. I was able to move him out here a couple of years ago. So yeah, he gets to be retired now. He gets to hang out with his grandkids when he wants to. And he gets to kind of chill out and not stress about that part anymore. But he never went back to being an entrepreneur. He never went back to having his own businesses after that last restaurant. Mm -hmm. So, but you not, so how often did you see your mom growing up? Because that's a very different dynamic. That has to have made you why you are who you are today. Yeah, I saw my mom growing up like probably five times a year. Like we always saw her at the holidays and then we would spend a month with her in the summer. And then it got a like, twice a year going through college. There was a short period of, there was like a two year period where I did live with my mom the last two years of high school. Um, I don't think that helped our relationship actually. I think it made it even worse, but it was after I had my son that we had a bit of a, we didn't have a fight or anything. We had falling out. It was one of the, like my son was two and it was just one of those moments where I realized like, there was nothing that would keep me away from my child. Mm-hmm. So what kept you away from us? Oh. And it made it really, really hard for me because we had had so many ups and downs already that it was finally, I was like at the point and there was some stuff happening that I want to go totally into, but it was finally where like this new stuff had started happening that I was like, I can't even wrap my brain around this because I, I have a son and I, and I am a mom. And so like, I can't imagine that anything would come between us. And she was letting something, her opinion of something come between us. And so that was sort of like the straw that broke the camel's back for us. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But I mean, it taught me a lot, I guess, about in terms of being a mom and while on my business venture of, it, I think that keeps me in check with being a mom and making sure that I'm never too busy to be with my son and that there is balance because I do love my work. It's very easy for me to get swept up in it and to probably be out of balance. So that relationship keeps me in check as a mom to be like, yeah, you put the phone down and go play basketball or jump on the trampoline or get in the pool or watch a movie that I don't really want to watch. Like it, yeah. it puts me in the mom mode. Well, yeah, because, but that makes sense why, why you are so ambitious is because were you kind of subconsciously wanting to prove yourself, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. I was the one I tell people that, you know, I have this spicy Italian side and while it has served me well in some areas of life, it probably didn't serve me well in others, but the way it served me well was that for every person that told me there was something I couldn't do. I, I didn't take that and be like, oh, you're right. I took that into my feisty Italian attitude and said, oh, really? Watch me. Right. <laughs> like, like, that was like fire. That was like fuel on my fire. It was like, oh, you don't think I can? Watch me. Like, I, I was on a mission to prove, <laughs> prove people wrong. Do you still like, I mean, 
I mean, I know people from the outside probably think you don't get rejected, but I'm sure you still experience rejection. And do you still use that as fuel? Like watch me? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm actually waiting on a call this week. That's like a really big, important call that will determine some course, some things over the next year. And there's a really, here's the thing. There is a side now that like, if I get rejected from one thing, it's, it's a much easier reject rejection to handle because I have my beach body world and I have my beach body programs and all of that. So it's, I'm not waiting on this one thing right. to change my life anymore, which actually allows me to have a little bit nicer perspective on things of like, great. If I get it, it'll be fun. It'll be awesome. It'll be a cool new opportunity. And if I don't get it, it's not the end of the world, but that feisty Italian side still lives in me. So if, so when things come up like that, or when somebody says no, I'm still usually looking for the workaround of like, Oh, okay. I'll just do it myself. Right. (laughs) All right. You don't want to work with me. I'll just go work with somebody else that wants to work with me. Well, you know what I think is so important for all of you guys listening in right now is that when you have a lot of irons in the fire, like you said, it's easy to look at rejection from a different perspective. Cause you're just like, Oh, there's, there's so many other opportunities. But what happens is, especially like in the network marketing world, when you are, when you have a very limited amount of irons in the fire, you care so much about them, right? It's like, Oh my gosh, if this person leaves my team or if this person does this, then everything's over. And it's like, no, like, but if you were to have a lot of things happening in your pipeline, um, then everything can change for you. And so how do, how do people get that? How can they get that mindset that you have where it's like, opportunity is everywhere. It's endless. Well, what you just said is priority. Number one is to remember that opportunity is really endless. And, and I hear it all the time because obviously I'm in the beach body world. So I, I talk and interact with our coaches and there are some coaches that recognize that there are billions of people that need a health and weight loss solution. And then there are others that think that the pool is, you know, this big and that they, that the the pool has already been swam in and there's no more room for anybody else in it. And it really depends on that mindset that you go into it with, because if we had solved that problem, the health problem, the obesity epidemic problem, then we'd all be out of a job right now. And and I'm nowhere near from out of a job, nor is anybody else in that field. So, so when you're in that network marketing and you're looking at that, that's one thing, like, especially if it's like fitness, network marketing, but it doesn't matter what it is when it comes to that. If you are only relying on that one person or those two people and you feel like, oh my gosh, if they go away, I'm in trouble. Then you're not really hustling as hard as you can be because you should always be adding new people to your roster, whatever it is. You should always be inviting. Even when my schedule was jam packed as a personal trainer, I had a waiting list. Like a legit waiting list of people that were like, anytime you have something open up, let me know. I want a spot. Like you want people coming to you for that. So yes, you want to make sure that whatever service you're providing, you're, you're really providing a great service to them. Mm -hmm. But that again, if you're always reaching out, that's what's key. You always have to be working on the next thing. And that, and what I will say, kind of what you were saying about, um, you know, when you have a lot of things, oh, the irons in the fire, yeah, the yep. irons in the fire. It's it's easy to look at rejection in a little bit more positive light, and it is. But I don't take that for granted at all, and it's I think why I work so hard on all of my programs. I'm such a stickler about you know from the minute I start writing one to how the science works with it, like everything. I. I don't ever let a product go out that I don't feel got 110% of my love, attention, and, and just pure devotion to during the development period. Because if I do that, if I slack on it thinking like, oh, I'm good, then I'm going to get a different form of rejection. People aren't going to benefit from my product. And then I might be getting rejected more often. Mm. So... So always, always do your best. Yeah. So it still fuels me. It just fuels me in a, in a, in a new, not a new way. I always want to do my best, but it just fuels me in that way. Right. Making sure that I'm always putting out 
the best product possible. Yeah. And you have a reputation to uphold, which you're, and you're not in denial about the fact that, Hey, like if my programs stop working, then people stop coming. Like, yeah, absolutely. That's just, that is like, you know, human nature. Yes. Right. So, oh my gosh, how did, so let's talk about this. Cause I know everybody's dying to know. How did you get the beach body deal? Okay. So here, I'll give you the shorter uh, version of it because it's a little bit of a long story, but basically I had been working on a nutrition program. It was called change my plate. It was based on portion control. Uh, I had finally finished putting it together in the best way that I could with the amount of money that I had available to me. And I had a, well, I had many friends in the entertainment business. I can say that because of the, the clients that I work with and the fact that I do live in Los Angeles. So I had one friend that was a producer at Hallmark on the Home and Family show. Oh, yeah. And she was like, hey, I want to put you on the show. Like, let's launch the product on Home and Family. And so that's what we did. We launched Change My Plate on Home and Family. On okay. And this was when I was literally like putting boxes together and shipping them out of my one bedroom apartment on my own. Like I was love it. service. I was packing and shipping. I was all of the things. Um, I also had a client at the time that was big in the movie industry, the very big in the movie industry on the uh, sound editing side. They had a friend that they were sort of had over to their house. They were talking about some movie that they were working on. And the gentleman was slightly, I guess he was on the heavier side. And so they were trying to nudge him to be healthier. And they were like, hey, look at this thing our trainer created. And while he was not interested in using it for himself at all, he did look at it and he said, hey, I think I know somebody that might be interested in that. Can I pass it along? And so she called me and and said, you know, hey, our friend wants to pass it along. And I said, who do they want to pass it to? And she said, Beachbody, do you know them? And I was like, oh my gosh. Pass it along, like the holy grail of fitness. Like, yes. And uh, so they did. They passed it along to the head of product development at Beachbody. They called me in for a meeting. I went in for that meeting. Guys, first of all, it was six weeks before I went into the meeting. So I spent six weeks. It was right before Christmas and the CEO was out of town. I spent six weeks analyzing like everything that could go right and everything that could go wrong in that meeting. Oh my gosh. And just being like... On one hand, knowing, like knowing, like this is my, this one is mine. Like this is my fish that I'm catching. And on the other hand, so scared that like that opportunity missed me, I was going to be devastated. And uh, had the meeting kind of felt like it went good, but you just never know. It's all a blur. Walked out of there and was like, I don't even know what just happened. I think I said the right things. Like I hope I answered the questions properly. Yeah. (laughs) And it was probably another almost two months before I actually got the contract. So I was checking my email like religiously all day, every day. And in the process, I had actually entered a contest with Women's Health Magazine where they were looking for like the next big fitness trainer. And it had come down to like me and like four other girls. And we were supposed to be going to New York for like the final photo shoot and everything and for the winner to be picked. And I knew if I did that deal with Health Magazine, then I wouldn't be able to probably sign on with Beachbody. And so it literally came down to the wire. And I had sent like one email, was like, hey, just checking in. And I got a response back that was like, yes, 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 we're still interested. You know, sorry, things are taking so long. And it was literally like two days before I had to tell Women's Health Magazine if I was going to go or not, that I got the contract. I got the contract at like 10 o'clock on a Friday night. And I think oh it was God. that following Monday morning that I was going to have to make the decision. And uh, so, yeah, that contract came in. And, and that in that moment, like that, like I said, you're always only one moment away. You're yep. one email away. I had no idea. I happened to open my, like I had kind of all but given up on it. And there it was. And I remember calling my dad crying and he's like, what's wrong? Because it was a Friday night. It was late. And uh, and I was like, no, nothing's wrong for the first time. Like nothing's wrong. Everything's right. Like Dom and I are going to be okay. Oh, that makes me want to cry. So that was like that, that moment was so powerful. Oh my gosh. You know what? And I I don't know why I'm getting emotional because I feel like I I'm reliving it. (laughs) 
I still get emotional about this. Well, yeah. And I think that there's so many moms out there that like everything we do is for our kids. Like, it's like, oh my gosh, like I just want to set them up so they could just really know that anything is possible. And in that moment, it's kind of like, you knew, oh my gosh, like I'm literally proving to him that you could do anything you want in this world. Like how freaking cool is that? And now he has his own Instagram and he's out there inspiring people. He's so freaking oh, man. <laughs> Oh my gosh. He's so cute. And I feel like you're just like the best mom ever. I love it. I love that you have him involved in all of your stories and all of that kind of stuff that you're doing now. So, you know, to switch gears here a little bit, how, how do you stay in this like pressure cooker? Cause that's really what it is right now. You have to stay creative and coming up with new ways to keep people healthy and fit. How do you do that with pressure to be creative because I know there's a lot of creative people listening in right now and they, they just fall under pressure. They just can't handle it. And I always say pressure makes diamonds. So when you put me in the fire, like I'm going to come out and I'm going to make some cool stuff with the fire. And I think that's exactly what you do. And so what would you, what would be your best advice for those moms that are feeling the pressure right now? I think just like you said, is that it's so hard. Some people really do buckle under pressure and I count my blessings that I actually am the person that functions better under pressure. And I really believe that that is training. That is all that is, is it's training. And I was lucky because I was trained young under pressure. I was a competitive dancer and that is pressure in and of itself. Like you're on a team, the team is depending on you and you're getting on stage. Like you don't want to embarrass yourself. So there was always pressure there. And I also learned to have thick skin really quick because I was a competitive dancer. So if you're going to go on auditions, you better be okay with being rejected more often than not. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really something that comes down to practice, to being very organized. Um, I will say that I, I'm organized chaos, if you will. Like for all the craziness that's going on in my mind, it's very organized. I know exactly what's happening and when it's happening and how it's going and ask for help. That is the one hard lesson I've learned. And that stems from my dad. Probably my dad never liked to ask for help. He always wanted to do everything himself. And I am very much like, I'll just do it myself. Mm -hmm. But There does come a point where I can't be the smartest in the room on every topic. I I am terrible at technology. Okay. Like there's just certain things that I'm like, somebody else has got to jump in here and help me. So it took a lot of years for me to learn to ask for help, but in finally asking for it, that allows my business to grow that much more because then I can focus on what I'm really good at, which is the creative part, the fitness part, what's going to be the new way to help somebody get in shape. That's going to be fun and entertaining that they're not already seeing 400 times everywhere else. Um, So I think those are the big things is really being organized, asking for help when you need it. And then, um, and then just practicing or, and I know that probably sounds weird to say practice. Like how do you practice under pressure? Yes. But you just do. You like the more you sit down and organize and this is my day and I'm going to work on this, this, and this from this time to this time, like be amazing at how much you can get done. I love that. I'm all about practicing because I think people just don't have enough real life experience if they haven't been, you know, doing dancing competitions. Um, so you guys, what Autumn's saying is you got to delegate, right? So look and see what is your zone of genius, right? So Autumn's is creating. And a lot of us spend our time doing things like little mini tasks that are like $5 an hour stuff that you guys can get a virtual assistant to do for you or something. Like when you're just getting started, you know, it's like, you don't have to be doing those little things. And I always say you're never too small to hire. Like, especially in this day and age with so many people doing things virtually, like it's really easy to delegate and to find the right team as long as you believe that it's possible. So, okay. So you have revenge body coming out and how was, can you talk about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The only thing I can't do is tell you my girl's results. So, uh, so yeah, my episode will air this coming Sunday, August 18th. Um, the show, it depends on your time zone. It's, I think it's on at 10 PM Pacific time. It's pretty late. Um, but super awesome experience really got to work with an amazing woman who was also a single mom, which was so cool to, um, to go through that experience with somebody else that was sort of sort of gave me that opportunity to like look back and pay it forward to like see this mom that was like doing it, but was still in that 
sort of upward climb part and needed that extra support and somebody to push her and believe in her. Because while she believed in herself very much in her career, she didn't necessarily believe in herself just as, as herself. Mm-hmm. Um, Why do you think that is? Because I mean, I'm sure it's not just her. Like there's so many women that struggle with believing in themselves. You know, her story, I'm, I have, I'm not, I can't share the details of her story yet, but it'll come out when the episode airs. She suffered incredible hardships, incredible losses that, that would pile up on anybody. They would pile up on the best of us. And no matter mm-hmm. how, how strong you are and how much you believe, there are times where life just knocks you down so hard that you lose a little piece of you. And so she, while she was able to pick up the pieces in so many areas, her own personal health and wellness was just one that she couldn't quite get her hands around by herself. And um, I, I was really cool to get to be a part of helping her do that. Hmm. A lot of women do that. They let life knock them down. And then it's like, what's the first step I take to start you know, taking care of myself again, what would you say is the first step they can take to start putting their health first? To acknowledge that they actually need to, mm. especially as a mom. So often as a mom, we have that mom guilt of like, well, I have to do this for the kids and I have to do this for the family and I have to do this and I have to do this. And we say things like, I don't have time to exercise. I don't have time to eat right. I have to take care of everybody else, but you can't be the best version of you for them if you're not already the best version of you. So if you're tired, if you're crabby, if you don't feel good in your own skin, then you're not giving them the best version of you. And it doesn't have to be an all day, every day thing. You know, a workout can take anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. You can do it four days a week, six to six days a week, right? Like there's always something little that you can be doing and eating healthy. That should be the eating healthy part is the part that kills me the most because we all should be doing it. Just like we brush our teeth. Like, like it's taking care of your insides. And it's like, well, are you going to like smash gunk all over the insides or do you want to get in there and like scrub it clean? And so it's like shiny and bright and we don't look at it like that. We just look at it as like, Oh, I'm just going to eat whatever. And Mm -hmm. it's not It's fuel for your body. But it all starts with acknowledging that it's okay to take just a little bit of time for you first Mm. and foremost. Okay. So acknowledge that you need to make time for yourself. What would be the next step? To schedule it. Not just to say that you're going to make time for yourself, but to schedule it. I tell people to schedule their workouts like they schedule a meeting with their boss. Like if you have to put in your phone, like meeting with your and your boss's name, then that's what you do because you would never cancel a meeting with your boss. You would never say like, oh, well, my son needs me to make him a sandwich. So sorry, I'm going to be late to the meeting. (laughs) <laughs> so like you schedule your workout, like it's a meeting with your boss and you get your butt to that meeting. However many days a week you determine that you're going to do it and you just do it. And will the first week be hard? Yeah, it will be. But the more you get into the routine of it, the easier it will become. And you'll quickly realize like one, it doesn't take that long Two, you feel so much better. And three, the kids are okay in the other room for 30 minutes while you're doing it. And, and you're setting a good example for them anyways. Right. Cause you don't want them to struggle with the same thing you're struggling with. Exactly. And chances are that if, if they, they're going to follow whatever is example they're given. So yeah. if you're struggling, they're going to struggle. So getting back to how, you know, you had amazing connections, right? But you weren't just like given the connections you created your network. Right. And I think a lot of people they realize that networking is important, but they put it off. It's like they procrastinate growing their network. What would you say is your top tip for somebody right now? If let's say, you know, I was just deciding I wanted to start a business. I never knew before I'm in my thirties. I never knew that it was important to start a network because they don't teach you that in school. Right. You know what I mean? You knew that. So you did that. But what would you say to that person right now? If you were going to start right now, 2019 to grow your network, how would you do it? I honestly tell people to just go big or go home. Like, do not be afraid to reach out to whoever inspires you because that's really what I did. When I, like I had, so I had my people that I trained all around LA and they all had like their own little, like 
okay, they know this person or they know that person, but none of them were like super, oh my God, this was going to be the best, right, perfect connection. Like none of them was like, oh, you're training Brad Pitt. It wasn't something like that, right? It wasn't right. Like automatically going to put me in the public eye. One of the biggest things I ever did that put me in the public eye was I saw that Brooke Burke had started a website called modernmom.com. This was just about 10 years ago. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I have a specialty in pre and postnatal fitness. Like I work with moms all the time. I'm just going to email them and ask them if they ever would want me to write for their blog. Literally, I pulled up the website, I hit contact us, and I sent an email saying, this is who I am. This is what I do. Like, and again, I had no massive accolades at that point. It was like, I think I had been featured in like a little local newspaper and local magazine once or twice, like nothing that big. And I said, but these are my specialties. This is how long I've been doing it for. This is where I live, which wasn't far from Brooke, where she lived. Although I didn't know that at the time. And uh, if you had ever liked me to write for you, please let me know. And I got an email the next day. And it was like, we'd absolutely love for you to write for us. So that moment I was wow. away. I was like, oh my gosh, fantastic. So I got to start writing blog articles for them. And I'm not a writer. I just, but, but at the same time, I could string together a, a conscious train of thought basically that could write an article about being a mom and exercising. But what was even better that came from that was three days after they emailed me to ask me to write blog articles for them. They emailed me and said, Brooke's filming some workout videos at her house. She'd love for you to join her. Are you free? <laughs> like, yes. What? <laughs> yes. Um, so three, like a week later, I'm at Brooke Burke's house filming workout, like little YouTube videos with her. And it's, you can probably still find the videos online and they're atrocious. Like I did not know how to talk to the camera. I was petrified, but it was such a learning opportunity for me. To this day, I'm like thankful to her because I would study her while she was filming her segments. I would watch her. I would watch how she talked to the camera. I would take mental notes. And I was like, oh, I get it. This is how she does this. This is how she does this. And I learned and I was able to take that and then make it my own for myself so that I felt really comfortable in front of the camera. But my whole point of that story is that I wasn't afraid to reach out. Like what in God's name made me think that, I, that Brooke Burke's people were going to respond to me? Right. Nothing. I had no reason to believe that they would other than like, I'm just going to ask. And, and this was before Facebook and Instagram and really having any way to reach these people or to showcase yourself aside from YouTube. So all of the people listening now have such an amazing ability to really reach out to anybody they want. And what's the worst that's going to happen? They're not going to respond. Okay. Right. So what, but you just might get an opportunity that changes your life and you just might meet somebody who can introduce you to somebody else. And so even if you don't live in LA, that doesn't mean you can't make connections Absolutely. all over the world. So go for the ask, basically. If there's, if there's somebody you want to know, you just ask them, can I know you? <laughs> Not that I be love- stalkerish about it, but like, but ask, like it never hurts to ask. Well, and I think the important part too is like, you weren't going and asking Brooke for anything. You weren't going, hey, I'm an awesome trainer and I'd love for you to feature me on your site. You said, can I write for you? So that's adding value to her because now she doesn't have to pay another writer, right? You're saying, can I do this for you? Basically for free. Yeah. And duh, right? Like most business owners would say yes if you're a qualified person because it's helping take you know workload off of their plate. So I think it's going forward with that intention of I'm just going to add value here and see what happens. So that what you're saying is that I wasn't asking them to do anything for me. I was asking what I could do for them. Mm -hmm. And that is really important when you're starting that networking is to not go in there with a chip on your shoulder of like, I'm so great. You should, you should want me and you should pay me and you should need me and da, da, da. No, go in there and show them what you can do and then watch the opportunities that come from it. Oh, I love that. Okay. This conversation has been so good. Um, I know you have a ton of programs out there, but what is the one that you're most excited about that you want the mommy millionaires to know about? 
Oh, I'm so excited that we finally just launched Ultimate Portion Fix. That's my nutrition program. So while people know my container system and that's been around for the last five years, this is really diving deep into the container system, the three principles of the container system, portion control, balanced macronutrients, significantly reducing or eliminating that processed food. We deal with emotional eating. We deal with sugar addiction. So it's, it's a really in-depth, comprehensive nutrition program, which I'm beyond excited about. With that, we relaunched uh, 21 Day Fix and 21 Day Fix Stream in real time. So we went back and refilmed those workout programs. I changed them up just a tiny little bit to make them fun and new and exciting. And you get them free when you buy Ultimate Portion Fix. Wow. We also launched the new Fixate Volume 2 cookbook with it. So uh, 102 new Fix Approved recipes. So there's lots of new things out there. Okay. So we'll make sure to link up all of that stuff to the show notes, you guys. It'll be on the Mommy Millionaire blog as well. And where can people find you, Autumn? They can find me on Instagram. It's just at Autumn Calibres, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all of the places. And it's all just my name, Autumn Calibres. If you look it up, you will find me. All right. And we'll link that up for you guys too. So one last question before you go. I always ask everybody this, but the whole tagline for mommy millionaire is be shameless in pursuing your ambitions, which you totally are. But what is the most shameless thing you've done to build up your brand? What is the most shameless thing I've done to build a brand? I think, I think it's just being me. Like I know that, <laughs> I that. Silly, but like really being like a hundred percent me, like not caring. Um, uh, like, like if I'm going to post something on social media, whether it's a sexy picture or, or a picture with no makeup, like there's no shame in what I post ever. Like so many people think that they'll be like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe you posted a photo in your bikini. And I'm like, y'all double tap on that photo left and right. So I'm going to post more of them. Um, so I guess that's like my, my shameless thing that I'll do to grow my following. I well, I love that because I think that actually you know, people really struggle with being themselves online. And the more that you show up as you, the more other people will too. So I'm happy that you do that. What I'll say about that too, is that when I say being me, like even in sharing my success, like I know a lot of times women have a hard time sharing their success and showing their success helps you. I believe as long as you're not doing it in a tacky way, it helps people to see where you've come from and where you're going And there shouldn't be any shame. Like so often there's like embarrassment and I'm not supposed to talk about money and I'm not supposed to let people know. And there is a difference between bragging about it, but also just being like, Hey, I busted my butt to have a, B and C. So I do think that even that is like a shameless part of it. Like I don't have shame showing that I own like 30 pair of Nikes, but also I own 30 pair of Nikes because it's my job and I live in them and I donate them when I'm done with them. Like I don't throw them out. I donate them to a charity. So things like that. But all of that really turns into just being a hundred percent who I am and not being ashamed of any of the sides of me. Oh, I love that. Well, I am inspired after our conversation and I know most mommy millionaires listening in right now are inspired too. So if you guys love this episode, do us a favor, take a screenshot, tag both me and Autumn on the socials and maybe we'll repost it. But most importantly, let us know what you loved about this episode and what you learned. Okay. Because that's really what like Autumn, you took the time out of your day to do this completely just because you love me. And, (laughs) And you know, like that just means so much to me. And so the one way you can give back to Autumn is by letting her know how she filled up your cup today. And, um, you know what, sharing the link too is really helpful because somebody out there needs to hear Autumn's story today because it might give them hope to keep going and keep persisting until they reach their dreams. So Autumn, I just want to honor you for doing the work that you're doing in the world. You are so incredible. You're always like just, you were so vulnerable on today's episode and just like showing really like where you came from helps me and so many mommy millionaires out there never give up. And so keep doing you, keep being shameless and show those, show those bikini photos, girl. I'll keep double tapping. Uh, (laughs) um, So mommy millionaires, we love you so much. Remember to go out there and get what you want. 
Thank you for listening to the Mommy Millionaire Podcast. For free resources and materials, head over to mommymillionaire.co. Make sure to follow Mommy Millionaire on Spotify and subscribe on iTunes. And it would mean the world to me if you left a five-star review of the show. And as always, ladies, go out there and get what you want.